Hello, and welcome to peace as we gather together virtually to praise our God, to hear his words of forgiveness and strength that he has for us. We are continuing our series on John. We are on John chapter 18. And as we look at this chapter, it, we see how love was denied to Jesus, even though he loved his disciples till the end. Let's begin now with our opening hymn. begin our worship, calling on the name of our triune God, the name into which we were baptized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John's gospel focuses on our call to reflect his love through our love for others. Yet we too often fall short. Jesus said, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Forgive, Forgive us, Lord, Lord for too often loving, loving ourselves instead of you. Jesus said, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord, 
for not, not loving, loving others as, as you loved, loved us. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Lord, for, for our disobedience to your commands. Jesus said, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. God, in his mercy and grace, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by singing. My sins give me alarm, and my conscience grieve me. Let your cross my fear disarm, peace of conscience give me. Help me see forgiveness won. By your holy passion, if for me he slays his son, God must have compassion. Graciously my faith renew, help me bear my crosses. Learning humbleness from you, peace mid pain and losses. May I give you love for love. Hear me, O oh my Savior, that I may in heaven above. is from John chapter 18. Leading up to this point, we have seen Jesus speaking with his disciples, preparing them for what is to come. Here we read of Jesus going to the garden, his arrest and his trial. Again from John chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews 
that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord? Or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue now with our children's message. And I sure wish you kids were able to be here today because I brought candy. Look at this, M&Ms, we have Starburst here. Oh, and you're not here to get them. You know what this means? It looks like I'm gonna have to eat all of this candy all by myself. I know what you're thinking right now. It's not fair, we can't come to church. We can't, couldn't come to get the candy. I know. Sometimes life isn't fair, is it? I know probably 
if you have brothers or sisters, you spent quite a bit of time with your brothers and sisters lately at home, especially if you're doing schoolwork. And always with brothers and sisters, by the way, I have three sisters and two brothers, so I know what I'm talking about. It seems like all the time with your brothers, my brothers and sisters, I would tell mom, it's not fair. They would get to do something that I couldn't do. They would get something that I didn't get. Now, looking back at it now, they'd say the same thing about me. But at the time, it doesn't seem like it's fair, does it? It doesn't seem fair that you can't go to school, that we can't go to church, that we can't sit down here and have a children's message and you get to eat candy today. It's not fair. But in the reading that we just read, if you listen to it, you'll find that it wasn't fair what happened to Jesus. Jesus was arrested, even though he hadn't done anything wrong. He was bound and tied up. He was led to the chief priest who made false charges against him. He was led to, the, to Pontius Pilate, the one man who could set him free or send him to die on the cross. And even though Pilate knew that he was innocent, he still sent him to the cross to die. It isn't fair, is it? No, it's not fair. Jesus didn't deserve to die, but yet he willingly went to the cross for you and for me so that we could be forgiven. You know what else isn't fair? It's not fair that we get to go to heaven because we sin. We do things that are wrong. We do things that hurt our, our brothers and sisters. We sometimes disobey our parents or our teachers. We don't always listen to God. That is sin. We don't deserve to go to heaven because of our sin. But Jesus forgave us so that all of our sins are taken away so that we can go to heaven. We thank God for his forgiveness that he gives to us through Jesus. We thank you that it's not always fair, but that we are forgiven of all of our sins. Okay, if I ate all of this candy, I would have a stomach ache. I'll be honest. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this candy on the shelf. The first weekend back from this time with the coronavirus, when we're back in church the, at the children's message, I'll have this candy for you all to eat. All right? So we're looking forward to that day. And until then, I want you to keep collecting your coins, your kids' coins, so that we can fill up the bucket that first week that we are back. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us of all of our sins. Thank you for forgiving us of all our sins. Guide us. Guide us. To trust in you. To trust in you. Even when life doesn't seem fair. Even when life doesn't seem fair. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Let's continue now with our sermon song, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Solid rock I stand All other 
ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant and blood support me in the raging flood when every earthly prop gives way he then is all my hope and stay on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, redeemed to stand before his throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, the solid rock on which we stand. In the midst of struggles, in the midst of difficulties, we stand and trust in him, the one who was faithful, the one who acknowledged us even when we deny him. Oh, Lord, we pray that as we gather here today that the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, might be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. Amen. We're continuing our series on John, as I mentioned earlier, focusing on John chapter 18. And the theme for today is love denied. Looking at the many ways that the people denied the love that Jesus had given to them during his time here on earth especially that last week, as Jesus had been with his disciples, as he had talked to them, as he had shared with them, as he showed them of how love perseveres, of how love serves when he, he washed their feet, of how love loves by explaining how we can only do the good if we remain connected to the branch of Jesus Christ. And last week of how love perseveres even in the midst of struggles. Jesus was talking, teaching to his disciples that he had spent three years teaching them, working with them, helping them to, to know and to understand what was coming up. And yet, as we hit chapter 18, we see that while this love was denied, chapter 18 of John is one of the most difficult books in the Bible. I think it's difficult because everyone that Jesus relied on, and even those that he didn't, but every one of them seemed to fall away. He is left by himself to suffer and die for us. Let's take a look at, at the different ways, the different people who denied Jesus and and how that really applies to us as well. The first one we read in John uh, 18 verse 2. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, went there, went to the garden with lanterns and torches and weapons. And if there was any doubt as to why he was doing this, that last word, the weapons that he had, that they brought. You see, love was denied by Judas, by betraying Jesus by handing him over into death, by handing him to the chief priests, those who wanted him to go to, to, go, to go to the cross, to suffer and to die. Judas denied the love that Jesus had shown him, that love that he had shown him earlier that night. 
but love that went back three years to the time when, when Jesus chose Judas to be one of his disciples, to be one of the 12 that he would train and prepare to take his ministry to the new level. Love was denied by Judas. It was denied, or that love was shown to Judas by Jesus that very night as, as he met with the 12 at the upper room, as he broke bread with them. As after supper, he took the bread and the wine and did something different. He said, this is my body given to you. He said, this is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. You see, he gave of himself for the forgiveness of what Judas was about to do. And after all of that was over, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples, washed the feet of the one who would soon walk out the door to betray him to the chief priest. Yes, Judas denied the love that God gave to him by his betrayal. But what about us? We would never betray Jesus in that way, would we? <laughs> well, let's not be too quick to answer that question. I want you to think back in your life. Some of you might not be too hard to think of an example like this. But has there ever been a time when you have used God's name, not in a way of prayer and praise, but in a way of bringing a curse down on someone else or an explanation of, of just a, a word that you say when you're excited, when you're mad, when you're upset, whatever you're feeling, you express it by using God's name or more specifically Jesus Christ. If you do use his name in that way, you're betraying him. Because you're, what you're saying is that Jesus is not our Savior. Jesus is not the one who came to save us, whose name we hold holy because of what he has done for us. Instead, his name is used as a curse, as a nonsense word, as simply something we say. As we read the last couple of chapters before this, the name of God that that Jesus proclaimed, Jesus' name is to be held holy and lifted up, not to be used in any other way. You see, when we misuse his name in that way, we are betraying Jesus and on who he is. Let's go to the next one. Verses 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the father has given me? Love was denied not only by Judas, but also by one of Jesus' closest disciples. Love was denied by Peter. Now we might think that that's a stretch, but that's what Jesus... Peter was doing, he wasn't allowing Jesus to do what he had come to do. Jesus had explained to them multiple times of how it was necessary for him to go to the cross, to suffer and to die. Peter himself said that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. But yet now Peter was taking matters into his own hand and doing things that was not of God, that he did not desire, using force and violence to to try to save Jesus, even though Jesus could have called down a legion of angels to take him from that time and protect him, Peter thought it was up to him. He denied the love of Jesus and what Jesus was about to do, even though he tried to do good. You know, we, we might be like Peter as well. We might deny him by taking matters into our own hands, by thinking we know and understand the will of God better than he does, by thinking that we might have to work hard, that we need to do whatever we need to do. Maybe, it's, maybe it starts innocently, that we try to, to be a, a do well. And by the way, it is great to obey the law of God. That's what he desires us to do. But sometimes in our obedience, we end up well, we end up making it 
all about us, about what we're doing, about how good we are, how obedient we are, how often we go to church, how often we read the Bible, how many times in a day we pray, how many people we have helped to do this or do that, do that. And you see what happens? We're taking all the emphasis off of Christ and the cross, and we're putting it on ourselves, making us the reason that we will go to heaven, denying Jesus' work and his will and doing what we think we need to do. But if we could earn our forgiveness, then Christ died for nothing. We deny God's love by making it about us and not about Jesus. The next verse, verses 26 and 27. One of the high priests, one of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked Peter, did I not see you in the garden with him, with Jesus? Peter denied it again, and at once the rooster crowed. So once again, love was denied by, by Peter, again. Peter, one of the inner three that Jesus loved so much, that Jesus took up to the Mount of Transfiguration to show his glory, who told him time and time again, this Peter, who Jesus said by his confession, he would build the rock, the church on it. But yet, Peter again denied Jesus' love. Jesus had even told him what he was going to do. Peter said, Lord, even though the others might fall away, even though they might fall, I will not. I will love you. I will stand with you to the very end. But not just once or twice, our reading, our part that we read was the third time Jesus denied him. It's often like us, isn't it? We know what we're supposed to do. We know those things that we're not supposed to do. As the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 7, I know that the things I want to do, those are the things I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, those are the things that I end up doing. He calls himself a wretched man, wretched man that I am. We know what Paul was feeling, don't we? We know what Peter was feel, feeling. feeling. His, his spirit was willing, but his flesh was weak. Fear overcame him, and he denied the Savior. We, too, again, are like Peter. We fall. We don't do what we know we should. We try harder, but yet we still seem to fail. We cry out with Paul, what a wretched person I am. The next one, verses 30 and the last part of 31. The Jews answered Pilate, If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. The Jews again said to Pilate, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. You see, the Jews had brought Jesus before Pilate. And they were trying to get him sentenced to death, something that they couldn't do. Love was being denied. Jesus' love was being denied by the religious leaders. Now, Jesus and the Jews, the religious leaders of the day, were, they never really got along well. Jesus was speaking the truth, and they didn't want to hear the truth. They were more worried about keeping their position and their power than they were about God's kingdom coming to this world. But yet Jesus still came for them. In John 1, it says he came for his own. But his own did not receive him. Jesus came for God's chosen people. The Jewish people. And yet the religious leaders and many of their followers rejected and denied the love of Jesus. Jesus often was reaching out to them. He was trying to convict them in their sinfulness. But yet they wouldn't hear any of it. Love was denied by those religious leaders who thought that they knew best. Now, this is one that we could easily say that we're not like the religious leaders, right? That we are not like them because we believe in Jesus, we trust in him, but yet all too often 
we don't live our life that way. All too often, we live our life of sin. Even though we are called to imitate Christ, our imitation is often more of the religious leaders than of the one who called us out of this sinfulness. Yeah, I think if we're honest about it, we are like the religious leaders. We would re rather rely on our own righteousness sometimes than, than that of someone that we hardly know. One more person denied the love of Jesus. Pilate said to Jesus, what is the truth? And after he had said this, he went back outside and said to the Jews, to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Love was denied by Pilate. The love that Jesus had shown to Pilate by telling him the truth. That his kingdom was not of this world, but that he had come into this world to reveal the truth. The truth was standing right in front of Pilate in the person of Jesus Christ. Peter knew, or Pilate knew that, that Jesus was not guilty. He even tried to find an easy way out. He had, had Peter stand or had Jesus go out and stand before them and, and offer to release Barabbas, a murderer, or Jesus, the king of the Jews, and they wanted Barabbas, a murderer, released instead of Jesus. Pilate, in the other Gospels, it says that he washed his hands of the whole thing. In other words, he tried to make the blame not upon himself, but upon them, but he was the one that made the decision. He denied that love of Jesus the love that Jesus had for him. Now, Jesus was never about rebellion, about overthrowing the government. He said, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. He never had an issue with Pilate or what he had, was doing there. But yet, Pilate sentenced him to death for a crime that he didn't commit. So are we like Pilate? So are there things that we look at with the truth? Even though we know what is true, what is right, we kind of take a little bit of that truth and say that it's okay, even though we might live a lie. Or, or maybe we act like, like the evil one in Genesis chapter 3, where he took the truth and made it a half truth and a half lie and, and tell it like it's the truth. You know, we are not an honest people. The greatest struggle that we deal with is our lies to one another, our lies to ourselves. So yes, if we look at it, we are no different from Judas, no different from Peter either time, no different from the religious leaders or, or even Pilate. We are sinners in needing forgiveness. What a wretched person that we are who can rescue us from this body of death. Thanks be to God for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Even though love was denied, yet Jesus, through his love, through his love for you and for me, fulfilled his mission, fulfilled his love. He acknowledged you and me as being sinners, but yet at the same time being forgiven and set free. By his love for you, by his love for me, we are forgiven. You know what the difference is between Judas and Peter? They were both disciples. They both really denied Jesus. One betrayed him. One denied him three times. One tried to stop uh, them from arresting Jesus, from Jesus doing his work. So what's different about them? One received that forgiveness, Peter. He knew what Jesus could do for him. That even through his worst sin, he could be forgiven and restored. Judas didn't think there was any way that he could be forgiven. He refused that free forgiveness that Jesus had for him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, there's nothing that you could have done in the past that is too great for Jesus' love for you. There's nothing that you might have done that would make Jesus deny you. Receive his full and free forgiveness.
that he purchased and won for you by going to the cross, by suffering, by dying, and finally by rising again from the dead. Confess your sins, my friends. Confess your sins, knowing that Jesus is there to forgive today and always. My brothers and sisters in Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. And now may this peace, this peace which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we thank you, O Lord, for the love that you have for us. That even though we often deny you with our words and our actions, yet by your grace and mercy, you give us your full and free forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Lead us during this remaining time of Lent to draw to you in, this, in, in repentance of our sins, bringing them before your feet, where you will give us that free and full forgiveness. We pray this all in your precious and holy name. Amen. We now join together and confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us go to our Lord in prayer. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for your great love for us, a love that you so great that you will not deny us before your Father in heaven. We thank you, O Lord, for that faith to trust in you above all things. Lead us and guide us, O Lord, to recognize our sinfulness and our need for you and what you have done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O Lord God, we hold up to you those in our congregation and friends of our congregation who are in need of your healing and of your strength. We hold up to you this day Emma, Catherine, Jean, Stacy, and Caleb, Tiffany and Lori, Larry, Jane, and Kristen, Joe, John, Paul, Kay, and Lee, Tammy and Mark, Shirley and Esther, Wilma, Mert, Rosemary, and Lee, Pete, Larry, Lori, Nina, Greg, John, and Dave, Bob, Mark, and Shirley, and those that we hold in our hearts at this time. Be with them, Lord, in the midst of their struggles and difficulties. Keep them in the strong faith, knowing that you love them and you will deal with them according to that love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh, Lord God, we pray for Amber Cole and her family as they mourn the death of her uncle Dave. Comfort them during this difficult time as they are unable to, to go back for the funeral to comfort her aunt. Give them the reminder of the hope that we have, not just in this life, but the promises you give to us of eternal life through Jesus our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, guide our missionaries, our pastors, our church workers, all who serve in your church. We pray for our volunteers as well, who give of themselves so that uh, the work of the church might be done. We pray, O oh Lord, that all who serve you might find fulfillment in the tasks that they are given, that the word that they share, the love that they show, may all work to bring more to know you and what you have done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Oh, Lord God, we give thanks for all the blessings you give to us. We give thanks with Todd and Cheryl as 
Sandra, as they celebrate their 30th anniversary, we pray that you would guide them and all who celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, remembering that you are the giver of all good gifts. Lord, we pray that you would remind us of that. Even in the time of this difficulty, keep us confident of your provision and care for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are unemployed and seeking employment. Lord, during this time with the COVID-19 virus, uh, many have had difficulty financially. We pray, Lord, for those seeking work that you would grant them work. For those seeking provision, you would use us in the church to be your hands and feet of care for them. Lord, we pray for our country, for our leaders, uh, in our nation, as well as our state and our local community, that you would give them wisdom in dealing with this situation, that you would remind them uh, that you are in control and guide their steps and their actions that they make. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we also pray for those who are suffering uh, with the virus and those who mourn the loss of loved ones as a result of this. We ask, Lord, that you would grant a quick end to uh, this pandemic and in the midst of fear and worrying by the world around us, that you would give us a sense of peace, that you would calm our fears and our worries and our cares, that you would restore our country and our world, and that through this, people might see that you are our one true God and more might come to you through this. For these and all things we pray, O oh Lord, we are trusting in your name, according to your mercy in the name that you have placed upon us, the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen. For our announcement, for one of our announcements, I invite uh, Chuck Sass to come forward with a message from the nomination committee. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, on behalf of the nominating committee, which is uh, Val Sharp, uh, Corey Fulner, uh, Amy Dolezal, Dale Dean Plummer, Steve Hunt, and myself, uh, we'd ask you to uh, prayerfully consider uh, considering being a nominee or someone you know be a nominee for the uh, church governing board uh, so that we can prepare a slate of candidates for the upcoming annual voters meeting, which is yet to be determined. Uh, we're asking that you look for the nominees that are supportive, invested, active in the vision and mission of the congregation, and those willing to accept the responsibilities and duties of the board members as described in the board policies. If you think and that you might be interested or someone that you know of that would be interested and qualified, we ask you contact one of the, one of the nominating committee members or past Burma, and we can get you that information. Thank you. Have a great day. Uh, keep a safe difference. And Lord willing, we'll get through this uh, pandemic. Thank you. One other announcement that I have uh, at this time, a reminder that the work of the church continues on. Uh, through the use of the internet and other ways. Uh, there is a, a daily Bible study that we have going. Uh, it is at, at peacecolumbus.org. You can take a look at that. Reminder that the services uh, will be there as well, as well as the bulletin for each week and the connections for this month. Although with the connections, we realize that there is a lot that we do not know, including what's going to be happening on Easter Sunday but we leave all things in God's hands, knowing that he loves us and that he cares for us and that he will be with us. A reminder also, uh, if you 
uh, to please support the ministry of the church. Continue by dropping off an envelope at the church or sending it in the mail to us with your offering. Or you can go to peacecolumbus.org and there's a place to set up secure giving uh, to peace in that way as well. Those are all of the announcements. Let's close with the final song. Have no fear, little flock. Thankful hearts raised to God. 